many racquetball pundits consider Cliff Swain to be the greatest player ever to play the game. He has tied the record for the most year-end overall titles at five and has done it with his deadly trademark drive serves, his wildcat-like agility, and a focused, competitive mindset that has been unmatched throughout his career. Though the forever youthful veteran has been at Racquetball Summit so many times, he has taken but one championship from the sports premier event, the Hilton U.S. Open. He looks to double that amount today as he goes into the U.S. Open Finals with a number one ranking and the challenge of facing his greatest rival. With four overall racquetball titles himself, Sudzi Manchik is trying to make his own case for the greatest player ever. With his inventive shooting and gameplay, his amazing getting ability, and his stifling power from any angle, he would be absolutely dominant in the sport if it weren't for Swain. Manchik has twice won the Hilton U.S. Open, and he looks for his third championship as he prepares to meet Swain in what is the most anticipated matchup in the sport of racquetball. The Hilton U.S. Open Racquetball Championships, brought to you by Hilton Honors and the members of the Hilton family of hotels. Visit us at HiltonHonors.com. By the United States Racquetball Association, your link to the greatest game on earth. And by Racquetball Magazine. Get instruction from the pros, the latest news, and more. Visit USRA.org to subscribe today. Cliff Swain and Sudzy Mancha getting ready to settle this thing at the U.S. Open Racquetball Championships. We're lucky again this year to have Aaron Katz with us, one of the greats in the sport of racquetball, to provide the analysis and insights into the sport. And Aaron, you were always the master strategist. Our two finalists had some kind of unfamiliar strategies to deal with this week, haven't they? Yeah, they, they really did, particularly in the semis. They had very similar uh, issues to deal with in that they were playing no-name players. Players both ranked out of the top ten, players who hadn't seen the semifinals of the U.S. Open before, and they both had to avoid that, that temptation to look past their match to the inevitable confrontation today with each other. Some exciting, interesting semis. Let's take a quick look. To reach the semifinals, Manchik had to overcome a challenging bid by number seven seed Rocky Carson, who in the last year has been quickly working his way into the upper echelon of the pro ranks. Meanwhile, a number 10 seed, Mike Locker, posted a major upset of perennial top three player John Ellis, who accepted a rare but nostalgic loss to Locker. We have a long history. Uh, I played him when I was eight, and he was 10 in, in Junior Nationals, and he killed me. Uh, so, uh, you know, I've always had that on my mind. Uh, growing up and, and uh, when he started playing racquetball again professionally uh, you know I was really hungry to play him and uh, I got him first I think first three times I, I gave him some good beatings and uh, you know he just repaid it this, uh, this tournament. He's just got a really unique style and he just just does things different out there on the court and uh, you know it's fun to watch it's, it's not so fun to play against like Suds was saying yesterday but uh, you know he hits these slice serves a lot of spin serves a lot while he takes steps while he's serving you know, take steps in different directions, and it's really hard to, to judge where he's going to hit the ball. And, uh, you know, and then he puts some slice on it, and it goes about 40, 50 miles an hour, and you're just not used to anything like that. I just, you know, you rarely see serves coming in like that, so consistently getting them in also. Um, so that was tough, and, you know, he just rolls balls out too, and uh, it just got me in a mode where uh, I just didn't, never felt really com confident or comfortable out there, and that, that's what happened. Mike Locker endures another of his many tough matches to reach the semifinals. But would his stamina hold out against another heavily favored opponent in Sudzi Manchik? For the answer, we recap the Hilton U.S. Open semifinal between Mike Locker and Sudzi Manchik. Seven serving three. Still doesn't feel as though Sudzi's reached the point in this game where he can just sort of no, he, top the hill and let it coast on in. No, he he's not on cruise, and, and I think he's conscious of that, and he's going to keep grinding away. Short, side out. 
first fault of the game. Three serving seven. Sudsy uncharacteristically. I, I think if there's one difference between him and Cliff where Cliff still has an advantage, I don't know that he quite has this killer instinct. Mm -hmm. I just have to believe that if Cliff was up 6-0, he'd be in the locker room by now. Oh, he'd be feeding on it hard, wouldn't he? Yeah, that's a great get. Another great get, another setup. Wow. That's a great rally by, by Sudzy. I mean, Mike hit a lot of great shots, kept Sudzy on the move, covered Sudzy's down the line forehand there for the first time today. And Sudzy just did a tremendous three wall shot. Sudzy Manchik is up two games to one in the semifinal match here. Now serving at 7 3. Point. You know, it's, Mike left that one a little high, didn't he? Uh, yeah, it, it's so different watching Mike play from what Eight, you're seven, accustomed three. watching the pros. He just guesses on every shot. I mean, there he guessed on all three. Two he guessed right, one he guessed wrong. But he, he's never coming back to center and moving with the ball as almost all the other pros do, and he's been remarkably effective with it. It's just different from, from what I'm accustomed to seeing. Sooner or later, the numbers have to catch up with you if you're going to gamble like that, right? You would think so. Uh, he's got that's how casinos stay in business. Yeah, right? <laughs> he's got great anticipation, and, you know, he's paid for it a few times, but, you know, he's right in his match. Set up off the back wall. Point Monchick, 9-3. Nine serving three. Tommy, 11 dry serves this game, 10 to the forehand by Sudsy. You know, not only is it more effective over there, I think what it does is it breaks down Mike a little bit because that backhand pinch is such an important part of his game. He doesn't get a chance to hit it. And now Sudsy looks like he's going to close this out, go home, and start thinking about playing the winner of the Cliff Beltran match tomorrow. And uh, I don't need to tell you who Sudsy thinks he's going to be playing tomorrow in the yeah. finals. <laughs> Somebody under six feet tall. So Sudzy Manchik earns his spot in the finals by beating Mike Locker three games to one. On the other side of the bracket, Cliff Swain reached the semifinals by way of a difficult match with the gutsy veteran and number eight seed Derek Robinson. He would meet the winner of a battle between two young guns and first time Hilton US Open quarter finalists, Kane Wasilinchik and Alvaro Bertran. Bertrand, a citizen of Mexico, outshot Kane for the right to face the man whose instructional videos he studied as a kid. When I was like 13, 14, I used to watch uh, Cliff Swain's videos. I guess they didn't work this time. <laughs> uh, I thought I, I got a chance yesterday against him, but um, he played really well. And um, I think I play well too as well, but um, he's just got so much experience that uh, that's why he won. He was returning my serves pretty well, so. He was kind of reading my serve, so he, he knew where, where the ball was going, so it was hard for me to get to the ball after his return. I, I felt really good, uh, but um, like I said before, um, Cliff was playing awesome, and it's hard to beat him on his, on his game. And let's see if Alvaro can come up with a new serve here. Well, that was the best serve he's hit in a long little time. Little heat to Cliff's backhand. Yeah, you know, he didn't hit a different serve. He just hit it better. He really hadn't executed a serve in a long time. And it is 7-9 as Alvaro Beltran serves. Short. Yeah, you know, you know, and, and that's a serve that Alvaro abandoned pretty early in the match that I thought he had had a little bit of success with. I'm surprised. He went away from that surf so early. I thought he started off the match very well 
with that wide angle drive serve to close backhand. Great serve. See Alvaro starting to get a little involved with the ref now. That first game, there were some tough points, but he never got involved with the ref. On that one, he started motioning to the ref, thinking that Cliffs was two or three bounces. Seven to nine for Alvaro. Great get. Couldn't do it twice. Uh, yeah, that's that's discouraging. You hit a, you make a great get. You get kind of a lucky break because the ball drifted way back into the backcourt. Cliff, using great footwork, backed up on the ball and just splat rolled it back in. Very tough shot. 9 7 swing. And seven. And that was not one of the best quality points we've seen. Cliff missed his serve a little bit. Alvaro left up his pinch. And then Cliff made him pay for it with a good shot, but not one of Cliff's better backhand pinches. But Swain serving to make it into his fourth finals at the United States Open Racquetball Championship. And he does it. Cliff Swain versus Sudzy Monchek for the 2000 Open Championship. I have to do whatever I have to do to be the greatest of all time. And I know truly deeply inside what I need to do. And I need to, you know, go out and execute my plans and, and my goals. And, you know, once I get this, this fifth number one ranking, you know, that sixth one is going to be, uh, that'll be the best. I mean, you know, then it'll take me above the elite. And I'll, and I'll now stand where no one else stands. I'll have six number one rankings. You know, but I want to get this fifth one down. I want to lock this in. And I know it's not going to be easy because, you know, I got the greatest player of all time still here banging away with me. Well, this is the U.S. Open. It's on ESPN. There's millions of people watching. It's for a lot of points, for a lot of money. It's, uh, but more important than that, it's, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity to go out and show what you're capable of. And there's a lot of things on the line here. And, uh, Knowing all that, I'd like to just forget about it and then just go out and play one point at a time. Something I'm learning from someone like Cliff, you know, is, is that mental toughness and that focus of, you know, play today, play now, and then worry about tomorrow, you know. But, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. I was playing locker thinking about matches tomorrow with Cliff. Uh, my game plan for him is no different than for anyone else. Um, one point at a time, play everyone really hard. If I make a mistake, uh, no big deal, learn from it and move on in five seconds. Uh, if I, same goes for if I hit a great shot. The one thing I admire most about Cliff's game is the fact that he does go out there and he just wants to, he wants to hurt you. I mean, he just wants to step on you, like you said, step on your neck and, and not let you come around where I kind of get a little complacent and lackadaisical and, you know, maybe I like to give the crowd a show where Cliff doesn't care about putting on a show. He just wants to win. It's, it's just obvious that we're, that we're different. We both get along just fine and, um, but he's more, uh, more on his sleeve, you know, more outgoing from New York, and, uh, and it's obvious. That's me, you know, I like the bright lights. I like, I like the crowd. I like, you know, I like the cameras. I like you guys. I like, I like everything. I mean, that's, that's me. I, I put me on a stage, and, uh, you know, you guys might see me acting in a few years after I retire here. I just like to go out there and, and play. That's my form of entertainment. You know, I know what the people like, and... Uh, fortunately, it's, it's my style that they like, you know, just play hard and a little more, maybe a little more blue collarish than uh, some of the other guys, that's all.
Sensei Manchik and Cliff Swain getting ready for battle here at the U.S. Open Championships. Aaron, you and I, not foolish enough to predict the outcome right. of this one, but give us three. Give us three strengths to look for in these guys. Well, yeah, I think I'm going to combine them, Tommy, because okay. they play very similar styles, and when you've been number one for the last eight years, which between the two of them they have been, there's plenty of strengths to go around. But the first strength that they both have is a great drive serve. Sudsies comes at you with a little more heat. Cliff is based more on deception, but both have great drive serves. Number two, tremendous getting ability. Both these guys get a tremendous amount of balls back in play, putting a lot of pressure on their opponent to kill the ball. And the third, which I guess is the mark of any champion, incredibly intense competitors. They hate to lose. And what's more, I think they hate to lose to each other more than anything. Absolutely. The two best in the world ready to go out in the U.S. Open. Don't go anywhere. I'm IRT Pro Mike Gidry. I'm going to tell you about the game. A match consists of three out of five games to 11, win by two. Pro rules. One false serve and you walk. Short, side out. A skip ball hits the floor before it hits the front wall. It's a source of a lot of controversy. Oh, that's good. That was good. It hinders when one player doesn't get out of the other player's way. It's a source of a lot of controversy. Players are going to try to hit straight down the line to get it past their opponents. Pinch is a shot that hits the side wall, then the front wall. You're going to see the players hit a lot of pinch shots. Also look for cross courts and splats. And don't blink or you'll definitely miss something. I'm out of here. Cliff Swain will serve first. Uh, is either player going to be able to set the tone of this? They played each other too many times to let that happen. Yeah, they've played each other a lot. Both of these guys have a lot of confidence in their ability. I don't think we're going to see any real, real complex game plans. I think we're going to see both players just trying to focus and playing on their playing their game because they believe if they play their game, they're going to win. That being said, Sudsy told me that he is really going to be attacking Cliff's backhand with pace because he thinks that's Cliff's weakness. 1-0 Swain. Good shot. Cliff with a pretty impressive <laughs> put yeah, away there. You know, it looked impressive, but I think that ball skipped. And, and a very tough call for the referee to see because it was, you know, he's in a bad angle and it was right in front of Cliff's body. But I think that ball skipped if we look at that on the replay. Great start for Cliff. Yeah, not only because he's up 3-0, which is the obvious, but he's hit three very good serves to Sudsy's backhand, which is real important for him to get off serving well. Yesterday, if you remember, he played a great match, but there was one thing he had trouble doing. He was hitting a lot of false serves. 3-0 swing, first game. We're playing best of five for this championship. That's a great shot. And you can tell Cliff, Cliff has come out. He looks very relaxed, very focused, very simple game plan. He didn't mix up his, whole, his serve a whole lot there. Just straight heat at Sudsy's backhand. I think we're going to see the same right now from Sudsy, just driving it right at Cliff's backhand, see if Cliff does something with it. Sudsy's been in the final more often than not in all the U.S. Opens. Usually when he comes out at the introductions, he's throwing ban bandanas into the crowd and balls and things like that, really into it. Very somber today. Does that mean anything at all? I think Sudsy has really matured as a player. Uh, he still has the phenomenal physical ability that he's always had, but he is really harnessed in his emotions and his mental game. So I, I think him coming out with a little less fanfare, if you will, is a sign of his maturity than what, what we saw five years ago, which was just a tremendous raw talent. 
Now we're seeing the total package. Monchik to serve now at 2-3. And both players, they, they still look a little tight. This is kind of a heavyweight boxing match where they're feeling each other out. They're very pumped up. Great spin there by Cliff. Sudzy missed his drive serve into the sidewall, so it wrapped off the back wall a little bit. And Cliff, using great footwork, turned around on the ball to hit a forehand, which is he's a little more confident with his forehand than his backhand. I tell you, Cl Cliff is picking up right where he was yesterday. He looks so focused. I mean, you really have to admire Cliff. Cliff is 34 years old. He's been on the tour for 15 years. Been number one or two about 12 of those years. And he's still playing like an 18-year-old kid, diving all over the court, playing with tremendous intensity. It's just phenomenal to watch. 4-2. Side out. Cliff missed an opportunity there. He had a forehand setup off the back wall, and you can see he's shaking his head. He knows at this level you can't afford to miss too many opportunities. Let's see what Sudzy does here. I think he'll move over to the left side a little bit, give himself a little bit more angle. Minor clips. <laughs> Someone in the crowd said, watch for footfalls. He just wanted him to narrow it down to one player. And there he sees moved over to the center a little bit. And there he didn't catch the side wall. Cliff had to flip it to the ceiling. Point. And that was a little better for Sudsy. If you notice, that drive serve hit the floor first and then the side wall. So Cliff had to flip it to the ceiling. The last few drive serve hit the side wall first. So they had come into Cliff. He was able to get a full swing at him. Let's see if he keeps that position moving off the side wall, giving himself a little less angle, but taking the side wall out of play. Logic 3 4. Nope. And no surprise, these players have come out with very similar service strategy, kind of what I would call the mano e mano, just straight drive serves at each other's backhand, seeing what you're made of. Much heat as you can bring. Four four now, Magic Sir. Great get by Sudzy. I think already we've seen more from Sudsy than we saw in his entire match with yeah. the Mike Locker uh, no, in the his, semis. His intensity level is so much higher than it was yesterday. He's playing with way more energy. Yeah, and, and he has, he's really stuck to the game plan. He, he talked to me about before the match, which was driving the ball to Cliff's backhand. He thinks that Cliff flicks the ball a lot, doesn't turn and drive the ball if it's coming at him with pace. Plenty of pace there, and Sudzy Munchik in the lead, 6-4 in the first game of the finals at the Hilton U.S. Racquetball Open. Six, sir. Welcome back to Hilton U.S. Open Racquetball Championships from Memphis, Tennessee. First game of the finals, Sudzy Monchik ahead 6-4. Monchik serving. Great shot by Cliff once again. Sudzy serve caught that side wall. Does two things. One, it takes a little pace off the ball. Second thing it does is it brings it into Cliff's body where he's a little more comfortable getting a full swing at it. Swain serving 
So he left shot. that one a little high, did he? Yeah, he left it up. Cliff, Cliff had a good serve. I would kind of characterize that as a forced error. Five, seven, Cliff six. had a good hard serve down the line, got a weak return, and then if Cliff has any <laughs> shot that's just bread and butter, it's that forehand pinch splat along the side wall. Very rarely misses that. Serve not 5-6. Any way he could have got that. Yeah, you know, no, that's the right call. He's phenomenal. He's not. He's not quite Superman. Superman. Yeah. Yeah. There's no cape on him. I don't think he could have <laughs> had that. Lift it six six. You know, once again, I think I put the jinx on he him did. <laughs> because that one caught the side wall. Same effect that we were talking six, about seven, with six. Cliff on the other side. Hits the side wall, loses pace. Comes into Sudsy's body, he gets a full swing, rips a cross court kill. 6 6. Good serve, flip to the ceiling. Good get, cut it off, missed it. Who could not appreciate that? Yeah, it's just it's great racquetball. You know, one one thing that, that these two players do so well is that they play very close to each other to put as much pressure on possible on the other with their getting ability. Very rarely hit each other. It's really amazing as, as closely together as they maneuver that there's not more contact. Great shot. Once again, Sudsy was a little bit behind the eight ball after the serve because the serve caught the side wall. Cliff got a full Six, swing seven, at it, seven. was able to jam Sudsy, and then Cliff followed up with a kill shot. Very high level stuff so far. Very few unforced errors, great intensity. Both players seem to be settling into their game. I think we're going to see this, this level of intensity for, for the whole match. Swing to each other. Great shot by Cliff there. And that is good fundamental racquetball. Cliff hits a good Z serve, which gets into the seven, side wall. Seven, seven. Sudsy gives him a weak return, and Cliff just plays a nice, solid backhand down the line. That's using the whole court. Tip for tap here so far in this game. 7-7. Seven, seven. Good splash shot there by Sudsy. And when, it, when I say a splash shot, Dami, what that is is when these players seven, hit the ball seven, into seven. the side wall deep. And because of the angle they hit it into the wall, it picks up spin and dies at the front wall. Sudsy's got the best backhand splat in the game. I think Cliff has the best forehand splat in the game. So you'll probably hear me using that terminology a lot. We now move ahead in this first game. Cliff Swain now serving 8-9. to nine. Good serve. That is just very tough racquetball. Cliff hits a missile down the left wall. Sudsy steps over, rips it back at Cliff. Cliff somehow fights it off his body. Hits not a bad shot down the line. Sudsy steps up, cuts it off, and rips it back down the line. Nine. That's a great serve. That's, that's the first ace and the first crack he went for. And, and you know, once again, we were talking a little bit about Sudsy's maturity. He knows it's a crucial point. Comes back, hits a crack ace. Can it, mind you. First game. The first game goes to Sudsy Monchik in this best of five at the U.S. Open. back to the Hilton U.S. Open Racquetball Championships in Memphis, Tennessee, where Sudsy Monchik now has Cliff Swain facing a 2-0 deficit in his best three games out of five. 
Munchik's effectiveness using a simple straight-in, straight-out power game has Swain's grasp on the status at number one, becoming a bit more unsure as the match is on. Earlier today, they contested the women's finals here at the U.S. Open. Great final. Christy Van Hees, who played in the final, lost to Jackie Parizo last year, up against unseated Ronda Rasich. A great, great match. Youth movement represented by Ronda Rasich and Christy Van Hees. She's been knocking at the door for two years. She's got to be excited to get her first U.S. Open crown. Let's have a look. Newcomer Ronda Rasich pulled a major upset in the women's semifinals by beating number one seed Jackie Parizo, preventing a rematch of the last two Hilton U.S. Open women's finals. Going into the finals match, Christy Van Hees had to be concerned, considering Rasich had done something she had not been able to do, beat Jackie Parizo in this tournament. As far as Ronda being in the finals, I knew I had a lot more experience going onto the court in front of the crowd than she did. She dives all the time, she's very athletic, but you still it's hard to go from a high like beating the number one ranked player right into the finals again and maintain that high in intensity. So I think I've benefited a bit more. There was a bit of a turning point. She she did it wasn't anybody doing making a great mistake. Like I didn't really make any great mistakes. Rhonda just did turn it up and she rolled a lot of balls in that last game, put a lot of pressure on me. It may have tightened up a bit, but Looking back, I'm going to be pretty glad that I bared down and, and uh, followed through. So Christy Van Hees finally holds the title that had eluded her the last two years as she beats Ronda Rasich three games to one, becoming this year's Hilton U.S. Open women's champion. 2-0 for Suds here, and did Cliff find anything he could hang his hat on in that second game? Anything that might give him hope for a third? Yeah, the fact that he hung in there so well. He was down 10-3, came all the way up to 9. It's got to be discouraging losing the game. But on the other, other hand, he's got to be thinking, I came way back. I just got to keep that momentum rolling in this game. All right, back to Todd O'Neill at courtside. Suds, you were one game away from your third U.S. Open title. What are you going to do to take this one home? Just not, just stay focused and uh, not think about that right now. I just got to go out and score 11 points. Good luck. Well, Sudsy may have needed only 11 points, but as we pick up the action well into game number three, Cliff Swain is having no part of it. Oh. Got Great that shot. one. Nine seven, Cliff Swain. Fighting for his life here. He's yeah. down two games to zero to Sudzy Monchik in the finals, Nine the open. And, you know, Cliff has, you know, he picked up on the fact that the straight drive to the backhand was not effective, and he's really stuck to the forehand side or with a jam serve, and he's gotten a few more opportunities off of those. <laughs> Cliff on the verge here. Yeah. You know, not done yet, but once again, Sudsy ripped the ball back at Cliff, but he showed us those soft hands up in the front court. Cliff's front court game has really been outstanding all week long, and this match has been a continuation of that, where he is just using his hands so well up inside that five-foot line. 10-7, Cliff Swain serving for the third game. You know, that's, that was a very good serve Cliff hit. Sudsy really just lunged over and somehow got enough pace on it to rip it cross court. First lob serve of the match for Sudsy, followed up by a ceiling ball. He really caught Cliff a little bit on that. Yeah, you know, you know, until Sudsy hit that overhand backhand splat, I thought we were in a time warp. It looked like a rally from the 1970s. Sudsy hitting a lob serve, Cliff hitting a ceiling ball, but then Sudsy brought me back to the present by hitting an overhand backhand rollout. Let's see if Sudsy sticks with the lob. No, he's going back probably straight heat to the backhand here. And that's a big miss. Mm. You know, Cliff showing a lot of courage on a pretty good serve, trying to hit a backhand pinch. Tough shot to hit. Yeah, he has been so successful bringing that ball back down the line. I don't know if he went for the pinch there or maybe he was a little bit late on it because of the pace on Sudsy serve. Wow. Look, that is unbelievable. 
was chest high. Yeah, it came off at an awkward angle, and he just rolled a chest high pinch, clearly going into the not for you to try at home category. Way into that. 10 9. Cliff once again from third. Cliff's got it. He really worked hard. Took him a long, long time to win that game, but he is back in it. Cliff Swain, and now we've got a match. Welcome back to the Hilton U.S. Open Racquetball Championships, where number one, Cliff Swain, faces an uphill climb as number two, Sudzy Munchik, is putting the pressure on in the fourth game, up two games to one in this best three out of five. What a get. Oh, man. Oh, hey. I may take back what I said earlier. That wasn't terribly sloppy. Yeah, I may take back what I said earlier, though, about Sudsy not being able to get the ball that he argued to hinder on. If he got to that, I think he may have been able to get to the other one. That was a great rally right there. Cliff Swain serving at 1 2. Cliff sticking to that forehand. He missed that one, set Sudsy up. And, and he's had some success with that serve. I, I'd really prefer to see him mix up the angles, the jam serve, the Z serve, either to the forehand or the backhand. I think that's where he's, he's been most effective. But, but it's very tough. Sudsy's return of serve is really outstanding. Do one again. Yeah, Cliff once again. You know, make, making an error there on the backhand return. You know, there's such a fine margin of error here. You leave that backhand up, and Sudsy's re-kills up in the front court are so good, he just punishes you. Wow, that was an uncharacteristic-looking shot from Cliff. Maybe the ball was pinned a little closer to the side wall than I thought, but it really looked like he just went for a very awkward touch shot. Swain down four to one now. Can't let himself slide much further. That is an unbelievable shot. I mean, Sudsy hit a good serve. Cliff hit a very tough return. Sudsy on a full headlong dive. Still had the racket control to push a re-kill and just roll it out. Six one Monchik. He's going timeout. No, he's he's got a broken, got a broken string, string. Okay. which is really a break for him that Cliff skipped that because it, it's tough to do much with the ball with a broken string. Well, as our players take a timeout, we also take a timeout to pay a visit to a very special part of the Hilton U.S. Open Championships here in Memphis, Tennessee, the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. The players have made their annual visit to the hospital this week. It was established for conducting research into catastrophic childhood illnesses. Through the years, thousands upon thousands of children have been treated without regard to their ability to pay. The hospital was founded by Danny Thomas, a man who met with tremendous success in the world of show business, asked how he could somehow give back to society. The hospital was the result, and it continues to do great work in this day and age. St. Jude has pioneered a combination of chemotherapy, radiation, and if necessary, surgery to treat childhood cancers. The findings that are reached here are freely shared with doctors and facilities throughout the world. Players found plenty of inspirational stories here and were more than happy to lend their support both to the patients and the very dedicated staff. Each year, the Hilton U.S. Open raises money for St. Jude through various fundraising events. After five years, the tournament has raised almost $80,000 to support the hospital.
Let's move ahead now in this fourth game. Cliff Swain still unable to get anything going. Cliff Swain serving a three seven. See if he can bring this thing back. The get. Ooh, no. Didn't look truly set on that. Yeah. Should have been. Yeah, he should have been. That's his fourth forehand pinch that he skipped this game, which is very uncharacteristic. That is Cliff's best shot, probably. That was actually the first forehand pinch he met, missed. He had hit four forehand pinches before that one. Cliff a little bit late getting over to that one. Sudsy put a little more heat on it. Anytime you score a point right out of the timeout, it was a good timeout. That's what you're looking for. You call a timeout when you're serving, think about a serve, come back in and execute it. Does he mind taking off three points away from home here? Two now. Nine three. Yeah, and, and Cliff just did not have enough on that to go cross court. You know, he's been guiding the ball down the line very effectively, but he's hit a lot of cross courts even harder than that that Sudsy's been all over. For, so that one was really pretty easy by Sudsy standards. In the, uh, the fat lady is, is warming up her vocal cords just about as mine are about to become worn <laughs> out. So maybe there's a, a certain irony to that. We'll make the transition here shortly, perhaps. Cliff Swain in desperate straits here in the United States. Racquetball Open Championships. Yeah, desperate is uh, kind of the half full way to describe that one, Tom. <laughs> Couldn't be worse. I'll tell you, I was <laughs> you must have had Cliff leaning. Anytime you get these guys to hit the ball through their legs on a jam serve, they must be leaning the wrong way. And for you folks at home, that's exactly what you want to accomplish with a jam serve. You want to jam it right into their body so they can't step away and get a full swing at it. And that certainly had that effect where Cliff had to hit the ball between his legs just to put it back in play. You know, and, and by contrast, if you remember the jams that Cliff had been hitting, Sudsy had been able to step away and re-kill. Swain with the side out, hanging on. And Not too much to hang on to, but he's hanging in there. Yeah, and, and Sudsy missed an opportunity there. But well, one thing that is just so outstanding, what Sudsy does in center court, his center of balance is by far the best. He is so low to the ground, it allows him to re-kill the ball and allows him to get off to a very quick start on the shot. Short serve. Short serve. And Ten serving three. Cliff, Cliff just never was able to find the serve that he got comfortable with. You know, he scored some points. He hung in there. He kept digging and clawing. But Sudsy really controlled the bulk of this match, primarily because he was able to be effective with a serve while Cliff wasn't. Side out. You know, and, and I misread it. And Sudsy hit a pretty good drive three to the backhand. Ten. Cliff came back down the line which is, is what he's really been effective with. I, I don't know why he's even attempted to cross court because Sudsy's backhand re-kill has been very effective. Oh. Yeah, that was a, a rare front court miss for Cliff. He had a good serve to Sudsy's forehand, but even when you hit a good serve, you don't get a setup. You still got a tough re-kill opportunity. That's it. 96, 98, and 2000. Now Sudzy Manchek, the U.S. Open champion.
The Hilton U.S. Open Racquetball Championships have been brought to you by Hilton Honors and the members of the Hilton family of hotels. Visit us at HiltonHonors.com. By the United States Racquetball Association, your link to the greatest game on earth. And by Racquetball Magazine. Get instruction from the pros, the latest news, and more. Visit USRA.org to subscribe today. 2000 U.S. Open champ. The, the even years, 96, 98, 2000. Those are the ones, said the. I know, but I'm going to work on a repeat next year. All right, what did it for you this year? I mean, you seem more collected. Let's start with walking out there at the introduction. Years past, you're throwing the bandanas, you're waving to the crowd, you're really into it. This time, you got your your eyes pointed at your feet. You're going in with a purpose. Yeah, I, I was definitely more focused today, you know, but Cliff, being the best as he is, he brings that out in me. And, uh, you know, I knew from, from last night when it was going to be me and Cliff today that I was going to have to bring my best game out there. And uh, I, I wasn't really focused this tournament. I was kind of in and out like a roller coaster. And I knew that that wasn't going to do it today unless I was, you know, straight as an arrow and, and go out there and play uh, play 120%. Aaron said it was going to be all about serve and return of serve, and you were right. You know, one one thing that we talked a lot about is your, you know, maturity as a player over the years since we've seen you competing at the U.S. Open. And one place where that really seemed to bear out today was on your serve. Your serve strategy seemed to be very effective, and you executed. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, my serve strategy, you know, uh, whenever I play Cliff, uh, you know, you got to mix it up. You can't let him get a beat on anything because, uh, you know, he'll attack it, and he's an animal out there. And uh, I had to keep mixing it up, and uh, my coach Ruben was helping me out a lot. And I played, uh, I played very well, and I was happy with my service game. I know I had a lot less faults today than I did yesterday, and that's part of being so focused. You're always the first one to say it. Cliff's the best to ever play the game, but you always now we hear you say at this time. When is that going to change? <coughs> like I said, you know, you know, I, I really I speak from the heart. Uh, Cliff Swain is the greatest of all time right now. Maybe it's a matter of numbers or whatever it is. He's the best player I've ever played against. Uh, I'd be afraid to play myself, though, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, he has five number one rankings under his belt. That's incredible in anything, in any sport. To be the best in the world five times is incredible. Uh, I'm, you know, now on my fourth time. This doesn't lock it up for the season. I'm still going to have to go out there focused and, and finish number one, and, and that'll be my fifth. And I feel that, you know, if I get my sixth, then, then I could comfortably say that I am the greatest player to ever play the game. There have been five U.S. Opens. You've won three of them. This is your tournament. I like the lights. You guys know it. I mean, <laughs> you guys all know it. I, I like being in the spotlight. Uh, the spotlight. I like the lights, the fans, the crowd. It's amazing. You know, the energy is just intense. Is is really no way to describe it. You know, unless unless you you've been you've been uh, lucky enough to compete as an athlete at this level. We'll bring more lights next year, and we'll see you then. Congratulations, Sudzy Munchik, Good job. U.S. Open racquetball champion. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.